What's up guys? Alex Corey here with Casey Gardens. I don't have a real video for you today, but I just wanted to briefly go over my amazement. I was doing some research on antioxidants this morning. I'm reading The Mineral Fix by uh, Dr. James DeNicola Antonio. Fantastic book. Each page of it is basically an encyclopedia of pharmacological knowledge and a database of resources. And the page today was antioxidants. So you have a bunch of different antioxidant systems, multiple levels of antioxidant defenses. Antioxidant is just, or an oxidant, a pro-oxidant, you probably know better as a free radical. And these are uh, any compounds or molecules that attempt to steal an electron from the uh, orbital structure of the atoms that make up the cells in your body. Uh, this is particularly problematic when it's your um, fatty acids, your membranes of your cells. So you, literally every day there is molecular warfare being conducted. There is chemical and electrical warfare. There are things probably in your diet, even if you're not eating a 100% on-point diet, obviously you can take that to the extreme. But if you're eating any junk food or things you know you shouldn't eat, things that don't make you feel well, these are oxidized seed oils, these are um, poorly processed grains, sugar, junk food, just fried food, any of that, you know what I'm talking about. If you're taking in any of that, those are literal chemical missiles coming into your body. Your body's antioxidant system is designed in a couple different cascading layers and an antioxidant is just one of many compounds whose job it is to donate an electron back to that compound, that cell orbital structure within your body that it got stolen from to make it whole again, or else you get a whole bunch of, just think of corruption. That is corruption as definition. What was once a perfect form is now broken. Your antioxidants job it is, is to prevent that from happening before it happens, such as you know with a healthy diet, um, that's what you try to accomplish. It will also scavenge any of those free radicals before they can bump into something and cause harm. And the third layer is the layer that gets most of the attention, and those are all of the enzymes that repair uh, genetic DNA-based damage, and that's what causes the mutations and uh, cancers, potential things like that, all autoimmune disease. That is where your body will start coding proteins that are malformed, uh, that don't and shouldn't exist in your body, and then it just creates more work for itself. And the fourth layer is where there are specific antioxidants that are going to um, repair the damaged antioxidants in one of the prior phases. And there's a bunch of different ways to, to bulletproof that system. Obviously, um, there are specific foods, fruits, vegetables, and uh, meats that you can eat that have a lot of antioxidant compounds. Most of those compounds don't act directly on your, your cells, they will trigger a metabolic pathway such as NRF2, which is what sulforaphane in the cruciferous vegetable or brassica family does. It ticks NRF2 and the NRF2 metabolic cascade will start that process for you. So the foods you eat tend to trigger one of your innate antioxidant properties. But in reading that, there's 169-ish enzymatic pathways that all contribute to that repair and prevention. And there were four big minerals that are needed for almost all of those different systems. Obviously, each system will have its own specialty, but there were four big ones that were pointed out that you need for um, basically just bulletproofing your, your antioxidant system. And those were selenium. These aren't in order of importance. Selenium, zinc, iron, and magnesium. It needs those most. Selenium is kind of hard to get. In mushrooms, um, I'll put all of the different highest food groups here, but basically a lot of people probably aren't getting sufficient doses of those. They're used readily for all of those processes in addition to the myriad of other biological functions that happen in your body. In general, the foods that have the highest concentration of those for you to meet your recommended daily allowance, and the RDAs are kind of garbage. They, they haven't been updated since the 60s. So take all the RDAs or um, upper limits with a grain of salt. We don't know. Scientists don't know. Researchers don't know. A lot of the specific levels, the levels they have 
are basically to prevent disease, not necessarily to be optimal and to refuel all of your antioxidant systems. So selenium, zinc, magnesium, iron. A lot of those are found in high concentrations in seafood, red meat, especially organs from red meat, so lamb and grass-fed beef had the highest. Um, heme iron is a generally more absorbable form of iron. There's a corresponding iron in plants. It's a little less absorbable and you need more of it to do the same job. Uh, zinc is seafood. Uh, zinc is also pumpkin seeds. Pumpkin seeds are a pretty good source for quite a few different nutrients that you need in, in multiple scenarios. So we've got organs, red meat, or organs from ruminant animals. That's lamb, grass-fed beef, uh, bison, any of that, elk. We have seafood. We have dark leafy greens. So that's going to be spinach. I tend to avoid spinach just because of the uh, a it's one of the dirty dozens. So unless you get it organic, you're getting a ton of pesticides and herbicides with it. So if you do it organic, steam it. That gets rid of some of the oxalic acid. Those oxalates will, if you have any joint pain, potentially contribute to that. So um, shard, uh, any of the, the dark brassica families, bitter dark greens are your good source for that. But you need a bunch of them to get, get that amount of um, magnesium, dark chocolate, is a good source of magnesium. Magnesium is one of the harder ones to get. I have to supplement with magnesium. I do magnesium malate. Uh, Thomas DeLauer has a good video here, which I'll link, which has all the different forms of magnesium broken down. But most people, magnesium is one of those that most people don't get a ton of or even meet their, their daily allowance for on most days uh, just because it is used for basically glucose modulation. It's used to produce ATP, adenosine triphosphate. So in every energy interaction, of your body, magnesium is used. So people usually blow through it, and it's not a bad idea um, if you're starting a low carb diet or it, if you're just incredibly active and you're wondering what you need to replenish. Uh, it's one of the key electrolytes, and it's hard to get and used in as many processes as sodium is. But most people add salt to food, most people don't add, add magnesium. So you got avos, you got dark chocolate. Uh, dark leafy greens are a few of the, the good sources for it. So make sure you're getting magnesium, zinc, seafood we went over, iron, same places. Um, selenium is a hard one. Selenium is in, what was that, mushrooms? And I can't remember off the top of my head what the other specific ones were. Oh, salmon. Salmon and Brazil nuts. That's right. Uh, Brazil nuts are very expensive. Salmon, wild caught salmon is expensive too. But the nice thing is um, they found that selenium or the selenium content of cold water oily fish will counteract a lot of the mercury in cold water oily fish. So some people are hesitant to do seafood because of the mercury content of the larger predatory fish for good reason. It's an issue. But a lot of good research is coming out, and I'll, I'll link the studies if I remember, that said the higher the... Uh, selenium content, so the better sourced the fish, the more counteraction to mercury it has. And that's a specific form of mercury. So they kind of cancel each other out, and you're still going to get the selenium to be used as a mineral for your antioxidant properties. So seafood is always good. That's why um, Mediterranean diet is so good for you, or anything that uses cold water oily fish, ancestral diet. So most early cultures if they weren't landlocked, we're eating a ton of fish. So cold water, oily fish, fantastic. Seeds, nuts, high quality animal food. I tend not to eat a lot of poultry because it's meh, but we'll do red meat, good quality red meat, not a ton of it. You don't need a ton of it. It's packed with nutrition, organ meat especially. So that's why a lot of people on the carnivore diet do, uh, or it's necessary to do nose to tail, meaning organ meats, bone broth, use the entire animal because all of the nutrition is spread throughout all the animal and the organ meats are the highest concentrated part of the animal. Microgreens obviously have, um, as we did a video last week on the increased, up to 10 times the increased vitamin and mineral content of microgreens compared to their ma mature counterparts. So if you don't like vegetables, this is the one of the common things I hear. A lot of people know veggies are really, really good for you but it's a textural thing. So either they don't like the, the juiciness or the mushiness of a mushroom or of, I'm aware a mushroom's not a vegetable, 
or a, I got to an argument with someone about that the other day, and I was like, it's not, it's a different kingdom, it's fungus, it's not a, whatever. People think of, of um, anything that's on the plate that's not meat as a vegetable, which is fine, but if you don't like the texture of a tomato bursting in your mouth, which I get, I didn't used to like that as a kid, or you don't like the extreme bitter taste of some of the dark leafy greens, and you don't like mushiness, so from like an okra or a mushroom, you know, those traditional weird foods that you eat as a kid, one, that's a preparation issue. Two, just do the microgreen. It has a higher vitamin content, at least some of them, like we went over in my previous video, but you're gonna get a mega dose if that microgreen has the vitamin or mineral present in it you will get a higher concentration of it per weight than you will from the mature plant so if you don't I, i've uh, had a couple of people reach out and say they like the red acre cabbage microgreens i'm actually cutting a couple now for um for some friends because they're trying to eat a little more healthy but they really just don't like vegetables they haven't you know like red cabbage very few people like red cabbage, but if you can find a form of it that you can tolerate, so either pickled or sautéed, whatever, um, they like the microgreen. They, it didn't taste, have that bitter, overwhelming taste and chewiness and crunchiness of a cabbage or of kale, whatever. So microgreens are the the good version, the doable version of of that, and I think that's wonderful. So whatever form you need to get it in, but give your body the ammunition it needs to fight off everything bulletproof your antioxidant system get it those four basic obviously you want a, the full breadth that's just your antioxidant system if you can give your body everything it needs it's it's a pretty well functioning perfectly designed machine it's like making sure your car is tuned up all the fluids are good and it's running as it should be. Don't blame your car breaking down on being a defectively designed car if you don't give it the necessary inputs it needs to run above 90%. Same with your body. Got to give it what it needs to protect you, and it will serve you for a long time. Sorry this was so long, but I was just excited to learn about that, and microgreens fulfill so many of the needs of all of the different processes in your body. So if you don't eat a ton of veg, just dump one of these, red acre cabbage, broccoli, any one of the brassicas on some food once a day better than not doing it bulletproof your every day